Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 28. In a meter bridge, the balancing length from left is found to be 20 cm when standard resistance of 1 ohm is in the right gap. The value of unknown resistance is. Now, roughly in a meter bridge, uh, how is the arrangement? The arrangement is somewhat like this. You have one resistance here on the left gap, you have another resistance on the right gap and then you have the uh, galvanometer here and this is the length of the meter scale. Right? So then you kind of find out the null point in this fashion. So now it says that in a meter bridge, the balancing length from left is found to be 20 cm. That means this length is 20 cm. Okay. And when the standard resistance of 1 ohm is in the right gap, that means the resistance on the right gap is 1 ohm. That is also fine. So we have to find out the value of the unknown resistance. That means this is the unknown resistance and we have to find its value. Now if the left half is 20 cm, how much would be the right half? The right half would be 100 minus 20 because this is a meter scale. So this, this scale is 100 centimeters, right? So then this would be 80 centimeters, right? Now since this is the balancing length, that means the galvanometer doesn't show any deflection at this point, correct? So that means right now the bridge is in the balanced condition. So therefore R by 1 should be equal to 20 by 80. Therefore, R is equal to 20 by 80, which is equal to 1 by 4, that is 0 0.25 ohms. Question number 29. The current I, the current one is the given circuit is. So, this current I is what we need to find out here. Okay, so the circuit looks complicated but it is not that complicated. Now the moment we want to find out the value of current through the circuit, first of all we will have to find out the value of the equivalent resistance of the circuit. And how do we find that? So looking at this circuit, we have to find out the equivalent resistance between points A and B. So very clearly we can see that RB and RC, they are in series. Right? Because both of them are connected end to end. Because right now we are talking with respect to points A and B. So we can say that RB and RC are in series combination. So therefore R series would be equal to RB plus RC which is equal to 12 ohms, 6 plus 6 that is 12. Now that you have calculated the uh, equivalent combination of RB and RC, your circuit becomes somewhat like this. So this is point B, this is point A. So this is point A, this is point B. Now instead of having BC and CA, you now just have one resistance like this. And the value of this resistance is 12 ohms. And this resistance is 3 ohms. So this is the combination now. So now you can say that these two resistances are in parallel combination. Right? The, so therefore the equivalent resistance of the circuit would be 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by Ra plus 1 by Rs. That is the series combination. This is equal to 1 by 3 plus 1 by 12. And this is equal to 4 plus 1, so 5 by 12. Therefore, R equivalent is equal to 12 by 5 ohms. So, this is the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Now, for the entire circuit, current will be equal to the net potential divided by the net resistance. So, this is equal to 4.8 volts, which is given 4.8 divided by 12 by 5. So this comes out to be 4.8 into 5 divided by 12 which is equal to 2 amperes. So the current flowing through the circuit is 2 amperes. Question number 30. From the graph between current and voltage shown in the figure, identify the portion corresponding to negative resistance. Now whenever you look at a VI graph, the slope of the graph always gives us the value of the resistance. And how do we calculate slope of the graph? 
tan theta. So the value of tan theta gives the slope of the graph. Now the resistance would always be positive if the current is increasing with an increase in voltage. For example, if you look at point A, here as the value of voltage is increasing, the value of current is also increasing. If you look at point B, here again as the value of voltage is increasing, you see in each point, the value of current is also increasing. Now, if you look at point C, what's happening here, from C to D, you see the graph is going in the downward direction, which means that even though the value of voltage is increasing, but the current value is dropping down. So, with increase in voltage, the current is decreasing. So, therefore, CD represents negative resistance. And whenever the graph moves like in this fashion, so if even if you calculate the value of tan theta, you would see that it comes out to be negative because the resistance here is negative. Question number 31. Two wires of the same metal have same length, but their cross sections are in the ratio 3 is to 1. They are joined in series. The resistance of the thicker wire is 10 ohms. The total resistance of the combination will be Okay, so here you have two wires. Let's say this is wire 1 and this is wire 2. So for wire 1 the length is L, wire 2 also length is L because they have the same length. But their cross sections are in the ratio 3 is to 1. So that means if the cross sectional area of wire 1 is 3A, then the cross sectional area of wire 2 would be A. Okay. Now, resistance of the thicker wire, now here the cross-sectional area is more, so this is the thicker wire. So, resistance of the thicker wire is 10 ohms and resistance of the thinner wire we do not know. So, we will have to find out the resistance of the thinner wire and then we will have to find out the total resistance of the combination. Okay, so now here we know that R is equal to rho L by A. So, R is proportional to L by A. Therefore, we can say that R1 by R2 will be equal to, now L is already equal in both the cases. So, this would be equal to A2 by A1 because R1 and A, they are R and A are inversely proportional. So, R1 by R2 will be equal to A2 by A1 or we can say that R2 is equal to R1 into A1 by A2. So, R1 is given as 10 ohms, A1 is 3A, A2 is A. So, A and A will get cancelled. So, R2 will be equal to 30 ohms. So, now that we know R2, therefore, the total resistance. So, R total will be equal to R1 plus R2, which is equal to 10 plus 30, that is equal to 40 ohms. Question number 32. Two batteries of EMF 4 volts and 8 volts with internal resistance 1 ohm and 2 ohm are connected in, in a circuit with a resistance of 9 ohms as shown in the figure. The current and potential difference between points P and Q are. So we just need to focus on these two points and find out the current flowing through PQ and also the potential difference between P and Q. Now, between P and Q, we have two cells of different EMFs. Now, how are these two cells connected? They are connected in series, but they are connected in such a way that their positive terminals are connected to each other. And whenever the arrangement is of this type, then the net EMF is equal to the difference of the EMFs between the two cells. So, the net EMF in this case would be equal to E1 minus E2. Now, when the positive terminal is connected to the negative terminal of the next cell, in that case, the net EMF is sum of the EMFs. But in this case, the EMF would be the difference of the EMFs, which will be equal to 8 minus 4, that is 4 volt. So, 4 volt is the net EMF. So, what would be the current? So, current would be equal to net EMF divided by the total resistance. So, the total resistance of the circuit is equal to capital R plus small r1 plus small r2 right now even though we are talking between these two points you might say then why are we considering capital r that's because if you look at this arrangement the same amount of current would, would flow through all of these so there is no parallel combination in this case right this, these resistances are connected end to end so all of them are connected in series so the same current would flow through all of them 
right? So this will be equal to E is equal to 4 divided by what is capital R? Capital R is given as 9, small r1 is 1 and r2 is 2. So this is equal to 4 by 12 which is equal to 1 by 3 ampere. So 1 by 3 ampere is the current that would flow through the arm PQ. Now we have to calculate the potential difference across capital R. Why? Because the potential difference across these two points would be the same as the potential difference across these two points. Right? So now how do we calculate the potential difference across these two points? The amount of current that is flowing through this multiplied by this resistance. So this would be I into R. So I is 1 by 3 amperes into value of R is 9. So this gives you 3 volts. So how did we do the entire calculation? So if you see here, these are the two cells with EMFs 4 volts and 8 volts. Now since they are connected in this fashion, so the net EMF will be equal to 4 volts. Now if you look at the entire circuit, so even though we are just uh, interested in knowing the current that would flow between the points P and Q, but looking at the circuit, we need to understand that the same amount of current would also now, when the current flows through this, so the current would also go and pass through the external resistance R. So, this would also uh, incur a drop in voltage, right? So, in fact, if you want, in this case, you can also apply the Kirchhoff's law. So, that will also help you to get the equation. So, if you use Kirchhoff's law, then also you can get the same equation to find out the value of current. So, once you have found out the value of current, this current I would also flow through the resistance R and the same current would also flow through this entire arm PQ. Now, to find out the potential difference between P and Q, what we did was we found out the potential difference between these two points, basically across the resistor R. And that is I into R. So this would be the same value of potential difference between points P and Q. So 3 volts and 1 by 3 ampere. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.